For anyone who has experienced a hernia, they are often painful and need surgery to correct. But what if we told you about a hernia that is not as noticeable? Hiatal hernias are becoming more common among women, people who are obese, and people with known GI issues. Today, Trinity Health Mid-Atlantic General Surgeon Alfred Trang explains what a hiatal hernia is, the symptoms to look out for, and treatments that can help patients avoid more serious complications down the road. Dr. Trang, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really looking forward to our episode. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah, so you're bringing this awareness that I honestly didn't know much about hiatal hernias. We were chatting before our episode. So I'm really excited to be able to focus on this topic with you. So maybe we could start just with the simplest definition that you could share with us. What is a hiatal hernia? Sure. So most people think of a hernia, they think of a bulge or something they see that protrudes yes. out. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, you don't see that with a hiatal hernia. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, I have to read a little anatomy with you to understand a hiatal hernia. I'm all for it. I love learning. Let's go. <laughs> so your diaphragm separates your chest cavity from your abdominal cavity. Mm -hmm. In the middle of your diaphragm, there's an opening called the hiatus. Mm -hmm. This is what allows your esophagus to go through your chest and becomes your stomach and your abdomen. Mm -hmm. A hiatal hernia occurs when the hiatus gets too large and the stomach starts to push up into the chest. And so the stomach is actually relocating into the chest, causing all sorts of problems. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that actually just segues perfectly into my next question. What would the symptoms be? But I think you're already starting to touch on that. So the symptoms change over time. Mm -hmm. When you have a, a start of a small hiatal hernia, the main symptoms patients have are reflux, heartburn, mm -hmm. you know, just burning in their chest. Mm -hmm. And they just take antacids and things like that. But as the hernia gets larger and more and more stomach goes in the chest, they get other symptoms. Uh, food getting stuck, difficulty swallowing. They get full very quickly because now mm. the, right. it's not the in the abdomen is, anymore. Yeah, yes. yeah. As they get even larger, you get even more symptoms. Uh, intermittent vomiting. Mm. You can get cardiac and pulmonary problems because mm. the way I tell patients is that your ribs have a finite space. Right. You're only supposed to have your heart and your lungs are in your chest cavity. Right. But now they have a third roommate. So <laughs> Unwelcome roommate. Unwelcome. <laughs> yeah, squatter. So, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so space becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. So when the stomach takes up more and more space, the heart and lungs cannot work as efficiently. Mm -hmm. So patients become more short of breath. Mm -hmm. They can't do the things they used to do. Mm -hmm. And they kind of just sort of get used to it over time. Right. Yeah, because you're right. Like you said, as, as you've described, it sounds like it's kind of a more gradual progression towards those more serious symptoms. In your experience, do, do people usually come to you kind of when it's gotten that bad? Or do you think, hopefully through this, we're educating people to maybe come to you more when it's in like the acid reflux stage and catch these at an earlier stage? You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Because some of the symptoms happen over time, mm -hmm. we're talking years. Patients just assume that, uh, I'm just getting old. Mm -hmm. um, I can't expect to walk as much as I used to. I can't right. do the things I used to. I get shorter breath. Mm -hmm. Can't eat as much as I used to. Things I used to eat are now bothering me. Right. And so they just assume that it's just a natural progression of aging. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it isn't. Right, yeah, it's sounding like it's not. So um, I was going to ask about uh, maybe some of the risk factors, because maybe whoever's watching this might think, oh, I have some of these symptoms. So if they have these risk factors, perhaps we could help them. You sure. Know, yeah. So unfortunately, a part of it is genetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you might have heard that, oh, grandma had a hernia or mom had it, start thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, others are just a natural, um, anything that increases abdominal pressure. Mm -hmm. So obesity is one. Mm -hmm. um, Believe it or not, I get a lot of weightlifters oh, who do right. a lot of heavy lifting yeah. and squatting and mm -hmm. increase abdominal pressure. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, women who have been pregnant numerous times. I was going to say, in my eighth month of pregnancy, a lot of these symptoms you're describing just sound like my pregnancy, but I think that's... That's a yeah. temporary thing, <laughs> Right, temporary. But imagine <laughs> if this was a permanent thing. Absolutely. Because yeah, much more serious. Naturally, with pregnancy, things are pushing up. Mm -hmm. But this is, it's happening on its own. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't go away and it'll get worse. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, unfortunately, in the risk factor is aging. 
Yes, which um, none of us can avoid. Right. And to get patients to understand it very well, I tell them, well, unfortunately, when we get older, things start to sag on the outside. So they get loose on the inside. Mm -hmm. So the height is, if it's getting already bigger, it's going to get looser and bigger over time. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But it's good to know. I mean, if you are, you know, approaching a certain age, maybe just to watch out for these risk factors. So say someone comes into your office, what are the sort of tests that you would run to test for a hiatal hernia? Well, first you want to get a good history from them. Mm -hmm. So if they have all those symptoms that I'm describing, and a lot of times what's funny is a patient will come to me never knowing they had a hiatal hernia. Mm -hmm. They were just sent because someone thinks they have a hiatal hernia. And they tell me, I don't know why I'm here. I don't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. But then I start asking them questions. Do you go up a flight of stairs? you get a short breath? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you not do as many things as you used to? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you take a lot more naps? Yes. Oh, oh fatigue is a some is this yes. Oh, interesting. Because your heart and lungs don't work as efficiently. Right. <laughs> um, do you not eat as much as you used to? Well, yes. Have you lost some weight? Yes. Mm. Those are a lot of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. As far as the reflux symptoms, you know, do you take antacids? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you not sleep flat when you mm -hmm. go to sleep? Because if you sleep flat, reflux can go up while you're lying flat. Mm -hmm. So a lot of patients actually sleep elevated on pillows. Oh, right. Um, so if those are the symptoms, then I start doing the test to look for hiatal hernia. Mm -hmm. First test we always do is to get a road map. Mm -hmm. So it's what's known as an upper GI swallow study. Mm -hmm. So you drink some dye and we take pictures oh, yeah. and we see where it goes. Mm -hmm. And if a lot of your stomach is in your chest, yeah, that's there you a go. really good indicator. Yes. Um, okay. So say I'm in your office and we've done the dye test and you've diagnosed a hiatal hernia. What would my treatment or what would sort of treatment plan would you recommend? And do you kind of offer to your patients? So it depends on the size of the hernia mm -hmm. and the symptoms. Smaller hernias, maybe like 5%, 5, 10% of the stomach is in the chest. Mm -hmm. We may just recommend medical therapy mm -hmm. and acids. Mm -hmm. uh, you would probably have to see a gastroenterologist to get an endoscopy mm -hmm. to rule out any severe esophagitis, uh, ulcer disease, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then I would just follow you. Mm -hmm. It'd be more of a surveillance thing oh, gotcha. where I might see you every year mm -hmm. and we would have the same discussion. Mm -hmm. How are your symptoms? Have things gotten worse? Um, are you having any of the shortness of breath and things we talked about? Mm -hmm. And if the symptoms are getting worse, then we toss, talk about possible surgery. Okay. Now, if I see a patient initially and has a hiatal hernia and more than a quarter mm -hmm. of their stomach is in their chest, that's the time to talk about surgery. surgery. So let's talk about surgery. What does that look like for a patient? So it can be scary anytime someone hears they need surgery, Absolutely. Um, especially if they weren't expecting it. Mm -hmm. And quite frank with you, historically, we surgeons weren't good at fixing these hernias. Mm. Um, sometimes the cure was worse than the disease. Okay. So that is the reason why surgery was not recommended in the past. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, with improvements in technology, mm -hmm. we now have robotic surgery. Right. We have improvements in technique. Mm -hmm. We have improvements in the type of mesh and things that we use to fix hernias. It is very safe and changes people's lives. Wow. Yeah, it just sounds all these discomfort factors that you're describing to be able to um, help with that. It's their quality of life. You're giving them back a quality of life maybe that they had, like you said, it's a slow progression, but had slowly lost over the years. Yes. Um, can you reverse damage? Uh, like, so say it's just been this slow progression. Like, do you feel like the surgery kind of gets them back to before where they were? Uh, believe it or not, yes. That's amazing. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's one of the things that I'm very passionate about mm -hmm. because to be honest with you, I didn't expect the results I was getting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I literally modified and changed my techniques probably about two and a half, three years ago mm -hmm. because I was getting the same results that every hyoid hernia surgeon was getting. Yeah. Um, the GI side effects, um, the higher than expected recur wanted recurrence rates. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't offering this to every patient unless they had severe, significant symptoms. Mm -hmm. But now with the improvements that I've seen, I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like patients are telling me unsolicited mm -hmm. that they feel 10 years younger. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Because that must they're... be so rewarding for you to be in this space then. Yeah, that's yeah. why I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned something that's dear to my heart, and mm -hmm. that's quality of life. Mm -hmm. um, I 
will not operate on a patient unless I feel I can help them mm-hmm. improve their quality of life. Because mm-hmm. um, what's the point then? Right, absolutely. That's great. So to have patients do that well, mm-hmm. and, and sometimes patients don't even realize it. Mm-hmm. I will come with a, say, a mother and daughter. Mm-hmm. And two months after surgery, the daughter's like, Mom, can you believe that when we used to go shopping in the mall, every other store we'd have to stop and you'd have to catch your breath, yeah. sit on a bench? Now we zipped up and down the mall and you never asked me to stop. Mm-hmm. And her mom thought about it and was like, you're right. That's so sweet. You're right. And it's almost like, it's kind of that funny thing. Like when you do get quality of life back, you just, it becomes your new normal, which is so wonderful. And I know that's what you want for your patients, which I love. It's so admirable. Um, is there, before we wrap, is there anything else you'd like to add about um, recovery from the surgery, preventative measures people could take? Um, I'll just let you sure. come um, here. So it used to be in the past that patients were thought that I'm too old for surgery. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, Even doctors who don't know, like their primary care doctors don't know, don't want their patients getting harmed by surgery. Mm -hmm. But again, with our improvements, I operate, my average patient is 80 to 85 years old. Wow. The main point I want to say is that patients work their entire lives Mm -hmm. to enjoy retirement. Right. But when you reach retirement and you can't eat, mm-hmm. you have chronic pain, shortness of breath, can't do anything, can't even go out to dinner with your friends because you're afraid yeah. you'll throw up or something. Absolutely. It's not a really good retirement. Mm-hmm. So uh, my slogan with patients is like, I'm going to help you take back your golden years oh, so that you can that. enjoy it. Yeah. So, yeah, they deserve that. And you're helping yeah. them get that chance at, like you said, enjoying the golden years. I love that. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time today. I think this is, I've learned so much. And I'm. it's my hope that in this episode, you know, you're sp- helping to spread awareness. Um, so, you know, maybe the, the person who has had acid reflux for a little bit longer than normal thinks, let me just go get this checked out and you could help them enjoy quality of life. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Dr. Chang. Well, um, thank you for your time. And thanks for providing us with all of this helpful information around hiatal hernias. If you or someone you know is experiencing some of the symptoms Dr. Chang described in today's episode, it never hurts to get a checkup. You can find Dr. Chang's contact information on our website in the description below. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you in our next episode.